The 80s was a wonderful time for toys. Motherfucking Teddy Ruxpin, Boglins, the Care Bears, Micro Machines, Popples, Pound Puppies, Army Ants. The list goes on and on. But one of the most popular toys from the time that people were throwing them elbows for was Cabbage Patch Kids. I remember them ugly little bastards. I mean, they're still around today, but just nowhere near as popular. So like anything popular, the Cabbage Patch Kids had cheap knockoffs, imitations, and parodies. The Garbage Pail Kids. They were gross, nasty little fuckers. But they were not sold as dolls or figures. They were sold as collectible cards that were stickers. They were crazy popular for a period of time, being banned in schools. Parents were easily offended by the nature of these things. There was a pretty lame live-action movie that was made, and a cartoon as well that got canceled because of adults who couldn't deal with it, didn't want their kids having fun. It was just too much to handle. But with all this nutsness and tie-ins, it's weird to think that we never got an NES game based on the Garbage Pail Kids. So I find it a, a little weird and nuts that all these years later, we finally got an NES game based on them. Mad Mike and the Quest for Stale Gum. This is an official and licensed game by Topps. It's actually being sold as a fairly limited NES cartridge by I Am 8-Bit, but it's also available digital for PC and current consoles. So I got the opportunity to play through this game before the digital version released, and I wanted to share my thoughts about it with you guys. I know there are many, uh, you know, Garbage Pail Kid fans out there, so does this game do the license justice after all these years? Well, you may find this part subjective, I mean, that's just the way it is, but I'm a little mixed and I want to explain that. So the premise of this game is simple. You play as Mad Mike who is in search of stale gum. He don't like it fresh. He lost his stash after the atom bomb apocalypse and the events of Fury Load. Yeah. So he winds up uh, traveling and he gets to the Topps trading card factory. And Brainy Janie, who runs the place, says she can create stale gum, but it requires ingredients that no longer exist. You just can't get them. So she lets you use her time machine and you got to go back to different periods of time and places in search of the ingredients. Now, you not only get to play as Mad Mike, but you also have three other characters with you that you could swap in and out, and they essentially serve as your lives. Once one dies, that's it, they're gone, you move on to the next, but you could swap them in and out as you please. They each have their own life totals. Now, the characters you have, you have Patty Putty, who attacks by bouncing around, you have Leaky Lindsay, who shoots, like, snot projectiles. And Luke Puke, who barfs on the enemies. Yeah, it's a pretty gross game, but it's Garbage Pail Kids. What the hell do you expect? Now, initially, I, I was a little annoyed playing this game, losing a character like Mad Mike or Leaky Lindsay, because I thought they were the best characters in the game. Once you get forced to play as the other two, their, their attacks just don't feel as capable. And, you know... As I started playing the game more and more, I found there were opportunities in the game to utilize all four of the characters to make things easier. So yeah, each character does feel different to play. They have their pros and cons. You just gotta figure out how to utilize them, you know, depending on the situation in order to make things easier. So yeah, at first I was like, okay, I don't like these other two characters, but they're all like worthwhile. You, you could use all four of them to your advantage. Now the game has six stages. You got the Stone Age, you got 1985 Tokyo, uh, 3000 BC Egypt, Transylvania, Mars, and hell. Yeah, you go to hell in this game. The, the stages, they're not like exactly straightforward. It's not like a left and right thing gets to the end of the stage. I mean, you are trying to get to the end of the stage, but it's one of those games where you have to do a bit of exploration in order to keep progressing, like to find switches, to open locked areas to continue forward. Now, there's also going to be a lot of secret areas within the stages where you can find trading cards inside of trash cans. So trash cans, they can restore health a bit and they build up your trash meter. Once your meter is full, you hold the A and B button and you can become invincible for a short while. Now, also the trading cards you collect, some will have special powers. Like one card will resurrect a fallen character. Another will allow you to fly around for a bit. 
and another will stun enemies another one will do damage to all nearby enemies so there's a few different powers within the game and with these cards there's actually 39 of them to collect and the interesting thing is you could trade them to other garbage pail kids who are usually they're positioned sometimes in the beginning of the stage and th throughout you'll see other characters in different areas of the stage that you could talk to and you know find some stuff out and then trade with them if you want so that was kind of cool so gameplay wise i didn't really find this game too challenging it took me slightly over an hour to finish the game and while i was impressed with the details of some of the backgrounds of the stages and boss designs a good portion of the areas of the stages were fairly bland enemies will repeat in every stage you will find some theme specific enemies in stages but it does get a little boring seeing the same like enemies over and over again uh, the bosses look cool but none of them posed much a challenge they are fairly huge but easy now you do have several difficulties to choose from when playing the game but all they really do is cause you to take more or less damage or essentially have more or less life so if you're skilled enough to avoid attacking enemies, all the difficulties in the game feel fairly similar. Now, don't let my criticisms make it seem like it's a bad game. I really don't think it is. It's just really the type of game you would have expected from, you know, the Garbage Pail Kids back in the mid to late 80s. It's the kind of game that would have released back then. It's simple, fairly straightforward, but has enough variety to make it enjoyable, but just not for very long. Like I said, my first playthrough was just a bit over an hour. And for a game like this, I'm not that disappointed in the time it took to complete, considering it's not an expensive game. I mean, I could always go back, try to find all the trading cards to, you know, get some replayability out of it. But the one pro or speed run it as well. I think this game would be a good candidate for that. But the one problem I had uh, with the game, my main criticism, was the uh, the game was very anticlimactic. Beat the six stages, you know, you have stage select, and that's it. Now, once you finish the game, you do get a little cutscene and credits at the end, but I was really hoping for some kind of weird end boss, some kind of twist. I don't know, maybe Brainy Janie wanted the stale gum for herself and betrays you and now you have to fight her. Anything really would have been cool, like the Tops Factory as an end stage. I, I don't know, I, there's just real, no real end boss to the game. I thought, oh, you got a stage select like DuckTales or Mega Man. Maybe the game isn't as straightforward as it appears, but it seems to be. Now I haven't 100%ed everything, so I don't know if there's anything else unlocked, but it just doesn't seem likely. If you watch the playthrough of the game that is included, like you can, you have that option where you can watch like a near perfect playthrough of the game. Uh, there's, I didn't see anything extra, so I don't know. Maybe there's some stuff hidden, and I'm just, I'm not aware of it at this time. But you know, some people may find everything that I've stated and shown today to be fine. And you know, I think it would have been cool if there was more to it. But regardless, I do think the game plays well and has enough grossness and garbage pail kids references to, you know, please plenty of fans out there. So before I, I wrap this up, I do want to mention the digital version of this game for PC and consoles has a few extras beyond just playing the game. You have the stop motion animated short film the game is based off of, which I thought was really cool to see. And you also have the full soundtrack available to the game to listen to and a gallery showing the original uh, Garbage Pail Kids artwork and its NES sprite counterparts, which was neat. You also have concept art, a digital manual, and full maps of each stage of the game to take a look at and inspect. The game also allows one save state and has a rewind feature, plus several display options to change bezels, aspect ratio, and filters. I think at the uh, $10 price tag for the digital edition, it's a fun play with a nice little package of extras. If you want the NES cartridge though, it is limited to 4,000 copies and costs $80 and releases quarter one, 2023. It's a neat collectible if you're into physical NES cartridges, but if not, I'd recommend considering the digital version as it is cheaper and a more fair price for the amount of gameplay you get. Um, and it's available now, it should be anyway. 
as of the you know upload of this video. And also to note, if you do buy the NES cartridge version, they give you a key to play the Steam version so you don't have to wait very long to play the game. So that's my review. I hope, you know, kind of helped, gave you a good idea of what to expect. It's $10. Check it out. Why the hell not? Or don't. Doesn't matter to me. But yeah, I had fun playing it. I stuck through it. I had to get this done. It wasn't a game where I just played it and, and nah, I can't finish this. I don't want to. No, I was motivated. It was, it was fun, for sure. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye.